John. Thanks a lot, Sean. The alliance between Russia and Syria is a strong one. It goes back decades. Uh, President Putin has supplied personnel, he supplied military equipment to the Assad government. What makes you think that at this point he's going to pull back in his support for President Assad and for the Syrian government right now? I think a couple things. You, you look, we didn't use chemical weapons in World War II. You know, you had a, you know, someone as despicable as Hitler who didn't even sink to the, to the, to using chemical weapons. So you have to, if you're Russia, ask yourself, is this a country that you and a regime that you want to align yourself with? Uh, you have previously signed on to international agreements, rightfully acknowledging that the use of chemical weapons should be out of bounds by every country. To not stand up to not only Assad, but your own word should be troubling. This is, Russia put their name on the line. Um, so it's not a question of how long that alliance has lasted. But at what point do they recognize that they are now getting on the wrong side of history in a really bad way really quickly? And again, look at the countries that are standing with them. Iran, Syria, North Korea. This is not, this is not a team you want to be on. Um, and I think that Russia has to recognize that while they may have had an alliance for them, that the lines that have been crossed are ones that no country should ever uh, want to see another country cross. Yeah. I just want to give you the opportunity to clarify something you said that seems to be Thank gaining you. some traction right now. Uh, quote, Hitler didn't even sink to the level of using chemical weapons. What did you mean by that? I, I think when you come to sarin gas, uh, there was no, he was not using the gas on his own people the same way that a shot is doing. I mean, there was clearly. I, I, I understand your point. Thank you. I uh, thank you. I appreciate that. There was not in the in the. He brought him into the to um, to the Holocaust Center. I understand that. But I'm saying in the way that Bashar, Assad used them, where he went into towns, dropped them down to innocent into the middle of towns. It was brought. To, so the use of it. And I appreciate the clarification there. That was not the intent. Okay. Uh, did the president speak with? Secretary Tillerson before he went on this trip to Russia, and is this stern message that the Secretary delivered today a direct message from the President to Vladimir Putin? I'm sure, yeah, I mean, they've, they spoke, he was in Florida with him before, before he left, and they, they met uh, Tillerson and the President uh, after his meeting with uh, President Xi concluded, uh, and they've talked, I think, since then as well. So this message, this, these, these pretty stark, harsh words from, from the Secretary Tillerson this morning about uh, about Russia, is that, can that be I, I don't know. as a I mean, message I, I, from I, I, Look, I'm not going to, I, I don't know the, the nature of their final conversations, and I know there's been some evolution of, of the intelligence that we have and the actions that have been taken since, um, since Friday. So I don't know where the conversations have laid off. Uh, but I think Secretary Tillerson clearly speaks on behalf of the United States in the President's position. John. John. You said, Bob, that uh, you hope that Secretary Tillerson would be able to clearly convey to the Russians the sentiments of the U.S. government. Is that enhanced by a meeting directly with the Secretary and President Putin? And if there is no meeting like that, would the President of the United States consider his Secretary of State snubbed by the Russian President? Well, obviously, he's going to meet with uh, Foreign Minister uh, Lavrov. That's his counterpart. I think that's the job of a foreign minister and a secretary of state to meet with each other. They're the counterparts. And I think that if he didn't meet with, uh, with President Putin, that he can convey his sentiments and thoughts of the United States to the foreign minister. Would the history of Putin meeting with Kerry and previous secretaries of state influence the president's judgment on that? We'll have to see. I'm not going to, I mean, we're, we're not there yet. So I, I think to, to prejudge the outcome of, of the visit. For the president, in other words, for Tillerson to see Putin on this visit even though there are no, but I would say that you want to convey to the no, no, but, but I government. would say that, that there's a bit of irony that for all of these talks that have been perpetuated about back channels and and direct links that that now it's well they won't meet with you and does that undermine the relationship that I, I've heard time and time again no I understand that but I, I but I think that's interesting that we went from all of these direct links to Russia to now are we disappointed that we can't even get a meeting with them there's a bit of irony in your question well, I, don't, I don't even understand your point. They, they I'm asking you at a time after the United States has called out Russia for a disinformation right. campaign in Syria, for collusion with a government it regards as carrying out a war crime, meeting with the Russian president, is it or is it not a priority for this president to have his secretary of state convey that directly to the He is conveying government? that message, and that's what he's the doing. But, but if, if the head of the Russian government won't meet with him, then he's going to convey it to his counterpart. And I'm asking you if that... And I just said we're not there yet, but I think right now... 
No, I, I think the answer is that he's meeting with his counterpart. That's his, that's the appropriate person for him to convey that with, and we'll have to wait and see how the meeting goes. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to clarify: um, is is the U.S. position as far as cooperation with Russia that Russia must is is that Russia must uh, admit or uh, agree that Syria was behind the chemical attack, and then also to do that Russia must disown Assad. Like, can cooperation happen? If Russia maintains its position that Syria was not behind that chemical well, it's attack, not just, it's not just behind it. I think that Russia has has joined an international agreement um, regarding the, the not just the use, the possession of. It was Susan Rice who went out and said that Syria no longer had uh, access to chemical weapons. We know that's not true. Um, I think that the United States, Russia, and others. Uh, signed an international agreement that Syria was part of that said that they would not not only use but possess chemical weapons. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we enforce the existing agreement that Russia is a partner to. That's first and foremost. And I think we need to make sure that we do that because it is in the national interest of the United States to make sure that the proliferation of chemical weapons spreads no further. And that, that is something that we've got to be very careful. It's not just the deterrence of future use uh, within those people, but also the proliferation of them uh, throughout the world. But at this point, Russia is not even agreeing with the U.S. contention that that the Syrian government carried out the attack. So I, I understand that, and, and I think that Secretary Tillerson has just landed a few hours ago, and I think uh, we'll have an opportunity to talk to them. But again, you've got to. Th this is not. I, I don't. You know, as I as I just mentioned to Steve a second ago. I mean. You realize that Russia is in an island on this. They are not, this is not some big split as to how this actually happened. The only countries that aren't supporting the U.S.'s position are Syria, North Korea, Iran, and Russia. This is not exactly, you know, a, a happy time cocktail party of people that you want to be associated with. Uh, they are failed states with the exception of Russia. So these individual states, this is, when, when, when Russia is saying that they don't agree with us, they are not siding with uh, other nations of stature. They are agreeing with failed states and a small number of those as it stands. I think uh, they are staring in the defiance or they, they are staring, they are defiant in, in, the, in the world view uh, that doctors, intelligence agencies, reporters, civilians, international experts have all looked at and come to the same conclusion except for them. I don't think there's any other outcome uh, than that. Administration has said sanctions against Syria are forthcoming. What will those look like and when can we expect them? Uh, great question. Uh, I, I think you know well enough at this point that uh, we're not going to announce uh, any of that kind of action until it's, it's ready to go. I think the President's made it clear that additional action on, with respect to Syria in terms of its failure to um, stop engaging in actions that harm its people uh, will result in action. And, um, and so I'm not going to get ahead of what he, he is planning to announce or when, but as he has made clear on a variety of circumstances, uh, he's not one to telegraph his actions until he's ready to, to make those announcements. Secondly, has the administration identified an opposition party that could come to power in Syria if there is a regime change? I, I think first and foremost, and I stated this yesterday and we'll state it again, that our number one goal is to defeat ISIS. That is unequivocally the number one thing. I think secondly, uh, the political conditions that are exist in Syria right now are such that what we need Russia and others to do is to help create a political environment in which the Syrian people can um, choose a leader that, that is more suited to them. I, I think getting into who that should be, I think what we're trying to do right now is shape the environment to allow the Syrian people to determine their, their, their outcome. Like video that's being played across television, United Airlines, do you think the government should investigate them, the industry as a whole, as it relates to passenger treatment? Um, I, I would just say that I, I think there has been clearly um, law enforcement is reviewing that situation. I think there's plenty of law enforcement to review a situation like that. Um, and I know United Airlines has stated that they are currently reviewing their own policies. Um, let's, let's not get ahead of where that review goes. Um, it, was, it was an unfortunate uh, incident. Clearly, when you watch the video, it's, it is troubling to see how that was handled. Um, but I'm not going to – they have clearly stated their desire to review the situation. Law enforcement is reviewing it, and I think for us to start to, to get in front of, of what should be a very simple, you know, a local matter, um, not necessarily 
needing a, a federal response. Hallie. Uh, two questions, just to follow up on Blake, just very briefly. Has the president seen that video? I'm sure he has. I don't think anyone looks at that video and isn't a little disturbed that another human being is treated that way. Um, but again, I don't, I think one of the things that people have to understand is that when there is a, um, a potential law enforcement matter to, for, the, for the president to weigh in, pro or con would prejudice a potential outcome. So I don't want to get in, but I think clearly watching another human being drag down an aisle, um, watching, you know, blood come from their face after hitting an armrest and whatever. I don't think there's a circumstance that you can sit back and say this probably could have been handled a little bit better when you're talking about another human being. Um, but I, again, I don't think that um, it is my place to get in the middle of judging how a company dealt with this. I think there's clearly going to be enough review, both on a corporate side and then on a law enforcement side, on how this was handled. But I, I think from a human to human standpoint, to watch a human being get dragged down an aisle with their head banging off armrests and not think that it could have been handled better. Um, I, I would assume that we could probably all agree on that. John. My two yeah. questions, though, that was actually just the clarification. First, on uh, both foreign policy, one on Syria. Uh, this administration is continuing to fight for its travel ban that would in part limit right. refugees coming in from Syria. The president spoke very uh, starkly about how affected he was by some of the images that he's seen yes. of these youngest victims. There have also been images of refugees, like, for example, Island Curry, that have also been heart wrenching for people. Is the president giving any thought to reconsidering that aspect of his travel ban? In terms of letting them in, well, I think you've heard you've heard a lot of these refugees in particular talk about the fact they're not looking to flee. They want, but, but, but I, and, and I think the, the right, and, and I think the number one goal of this president is to make sure that we protect <laughs> our people, our country, um, and to keep those people from um, from having to flee. They have family there. Um, and so that's our number one goal, is creating a safer environment, de-escalating the conflict there, um, is, is not to figure out how we, people we can fly out. I think the U.S. has been extremely supportive when it comes to the financial piece of this um, and looking for ways to work with in a diplomatic fashion. But the goal isn't to figure out how many people we can just uh, import to this country. I think there's clearly a, a security concern that we have to be. Also? They have touched him, and I think that's what he made very clear. That's why, you know, uh, with the uh, consent and guidance of his national security team, it was very extreme. It was moving. I don't think, I mean, going back, I don't mean to make two examples of this, but I don't think you can watch those, those things. Not that you should have any human being, but when you see in particular young children and babies being gassed, uh, it, it should move any human being that has a heart. Um, so I, I think, but that, that, that partially dealt with why he acted so decisively, is to see an individual in Assad, in that regime, act in a way that, that reacted to, you know, we can't, we can't condemn every act, but I think to literally see someone use gas. Um, and it was pointed out, you know, you think about that, it is, a, it is in the same category as nuclear weapons for a reason. It is that lethal, it is that deadly, it is that horrific that when you recognize that use of chemical weapons is put in the same category of weapons of mass destruction as so many other things because of what it does to an individual um, and the nature of an attack like that, that even first responders, um, if you saw some of the tape, were getting you know, grossly affected by this, uh, it, it moved him tremendously. And that's part of the reason he acted the way he did. <laughs> Sean, I also know that you've seen the latest provocations from Pyongyang. The president tweeted this morning that if China won't help, the U.S. will solve the problem. That's right. What does he mean by that, solve I, the problem? I, right. I think he has been very clear uh, that he will not tolerate some of this action by North Korea. But he's all, But to, to answer your question, I think I've said this before on a variety of topics. The president is not one who's going to go out there and telegraph his response. Um, I think he keeps all options on the table. He keeps his cards close to the vest. And as he showed... Uh, last week with respect to Syria, when the president is willing to act, it's going to be decisive and proportional uh, to make it very clear uh, what the position of the United States is. Now, that's not what I said. I just said that, as you know, when the president's ready to act, he makes it very clear. Um, and I think there's no question that when the president is ready to make a statement, he will do that. But I think he has made it clear um, with respect to North Korea that their behavior and their actions with respect to the missile launches is not tolerable. The last thing we want to see is a nuclear uh, North Korea that threatens the, the coast of the United States, or for that matter, uh, you know, any other country and any other set of human beings. So we need stability in that region, um, and I think he has put them clearly on notice. John.